Jesus Christ, able to save to the uttermost all those who come to God through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you'd like a copy of God's Word, New Testament, uh, you come and ask for one, gladly place into your hands. Precious, most, I tell you, the most precious gift that um, one person can afford another in this world, in this life, to uh, give somebody, present somebody with the Word of God. Most precious gift, I tell you, of all. Next, that is, of course, to uh, the gift that only God can give you, and that's, well, the gift of His Son, salvation, His grace, His free grace that He gives to whosoever He pleases to give it to and of course y'all be in need of God's grace because without grace you can't be saved because that's what grace is it's saving grace sovereign grace God gives it as he will sovereign as he gives you know uh, men are brought to a knowledge of himself through his grace and the grace of God that comes to people through through what I'm doing here today, the preaching of God's Word. It's the means that God has ordained, you see, by which men and women be saved, be brought to a knowledge, an understanding, an experience of God's grace through the preaching of the Gospel. Foolishness. Foolishness, says God, to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it's the power of God. The preaching, that is, of God's Word, oh, it's powerful, brings men and women, calls them out of death and hell and into the kingdom of God. Those, that is, who hear the gospel, who hearken to God's voice in the gospel, who hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, who says, my sheep hear my voice, and, I, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the gospel, the good news that I bring you today that's able to save. Grace, my friends, that saves, that reconciles sinners to God. Because the thing is, you see, my friends, without God's grace, without His Son, Jesus Christ, you be unreconciled to God. The state, you see, the condition is one of enmity, says God. God is your enemy. You're at enmity against Him in your mind, He says. 
hostile to God in your mind, in your sinful mind. It's the condition, you see, of all men, women and children without the grace of God. We be all of us, every one of us, conceived in sin in our mother's womb. We were conceived in sin, born in sin, come into the wild, shapen, formed in iniquity, live and die in sin, but for the intervention of God's grace. In the Old Testament, the Bible we have was called the Book of Psalms, and they were written by well, one called King David, and he's referred to as the, um, well, the sweet psalmist of Israel. And one of the reasons, I think at least anyway, why he's sweet is because he tells us, you know, there's no guile, there's no deception with him, there's no political correctness, you know. He just simply tells us, you know, like it is. I mean, right at the very start, you see, his book of Psalms, he tells us, you know, that um, <clears throat> From God's perspective, you see, there's a, there's a distinctive that God makes within the human race. Now you and I, we might have many distinctives, you know, with regards to men and women. Some you call black, some you call white, some you call rich, some you call poor. All kinds of distinctions that men make, but God only has two, the godly and the ungodly those who are with God and those who are without God. But to be, all oh my friends, to be in this world without hope and without God, that's tragic. But my friends, to face an eternity, a lost eternity in that state and condition is even more, more tragic than ever. So my friends, we've got to get you out of those sinful natures in which you were conceived and born. We've got to get a change into you. We've got to get the grace of God into you. We've got to get the truth into you. Because only the truth will make you free, says Jesus. The truth, my friends. And there's only one truth. The truth, that is, of God's Word outside of the Bible. I declare to you, my friends, it is. There is no truth. None whatsoever. Not in your philosophies, not in your false religions, not in your politics. No truth, my friends, not in your scientists either. No truth apart from God's Word. But it's receiving, receiving of the truth, receiving a love of the truth, embracing the truth that men and women are brought to salvation are brought to a saving relationship with God, the triune God who made heaven and earth and everything in it, who made you and made me and made everything else. That God, my friends, has sent his only begotten Son into the world that to him, that we might be reconciled to God. That enmity, hostility in your mind might be destroyed might be eradicated and you brought to a loving relationship with God, knowing his forgiveness, knowing his pardon, and knowing eternal life, knowing that you are safe both for time and for eternity, come what may. But it's the gospel, my friends, the truth of the gospel, you see, receive and believe the Word of God, the engrafted Word of God that is able to save your soul. And I tell you, nothing else can, nothing else will. So David makes this distinction, you see, uh, between the, the godly and the ungodly. Well, the God, ungodly, he says, those godless, those without God, those who have forgotten God, discarded God, well, they won't stand in the judgment They'll be blown away, says, says, says the psalmist. They'll be blown away in that day. Ah, oh, he says, the way, the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's the end of ungodliness. That's the end of wickedness. That's the end of that enmity, hostility in your heart and mind against God. That's the end of your sin, my friends. 
perish, perish in your sin, everlastingly, eternally. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, because whosoever believeth is a person who sees God's salvation, who is reconciled to God, at one with God, godly instead of ungodly. So the ungodly has to go, has to be repented of, turned from, forsaken, abandoned. You have to be delivered from it, and you have to be brought to God's Son, Jesus Christ, God's Lamb. God's Lamb, you see, uh, who takes away the sin of the world, uh, the Bible says, and would take your sin away should you repent, should you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He would take your sin away. So, so far away, I tell you, that not even God himself can find them. So, so far away. As far as the east is from the west, an infinite distance. God, to pardon you, blot out your sins as with a thick cloud and remember them no more. Oh, the precious Lamb of God, David's greater son. Jesus Christ. But David, you know, like I say, the psalmist of Israel, well, he tells us, he tells us it like it is. No PC, no political correctness, you know, no guile, no deceit, no twisting of words, you know, as people do in this generation. He gives it to us straight, you know, straight from the hip as it were. And here's what he says, listen up, Psalm 9, check it out. The wicked, the wicked, that's the ungodly, the unrighteous, the unholy, those not reconciled to God, those who have forgotten God, the wicked, he says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Yep, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations not forget God. Don't get much clearer than that. The danger you see that you're in, it's not just, you know, that sin gives you a bad day or some bad days or a bad life here in this world. Not just that sin makes you miserable. Not just, you know, that sin, uh, you know, afflicts you in all kinds of different ways and, uh, you know, makes you subject, you know, to all these addictions that you have in your modern day society, hold you prisoner, hold you captive, hold you in slavery. That's what sin does. Bad enough in this world, you know, it destroys people. You might have noticed here even in the town of Walsall, you might have noticed people broken in mind, some broken in body, and some of course utterly broken inside in their very soul. Spiritually damaged, my friends. That's what sin does in this world. But my friends, there's the world to come. There's eternity. There's a day when you're going to be breathe. You're going to breathe your last, and you're going to go out of this world, and you're going to stand before God. And you're going to be judged. The godless, the profane, you know, irreligious profane people. They'll tell you. Oh, yeah, when you're dead, you're dead, you know. It's all over. No more pain, no more suffering, you know. It's all over. Finish. Black hole. Finito. Nobody knows. Nobody ever came back from the dead to tell us. Yes, they did. Jesus Christ did. And he tells us clearly, plainly in his word. It is appointed unto man, divinely appointed unto man once to die. After that, after that comes the judgment. Then you stand before God, and my friends, David tells us clearly, the wicked shall be turned into hell, into hell, my friends, and all the nations that forget God. That's just the ones, you know, that forget God, you know, leave him out of the equation. Never give him any thought, you know from one day to the next. They're faced, you know, with a virus that's taking people out of this world, you know, in their thousands, in their thousands. 
and people are still being removed, you know, from this planet because of this virus, COVID-19. And here you are today, but no thought of God, no thought of eternity, no thought that maybe that virus come your way and take you out of this world into the presence of the judge and my friends to be judged and to be allotted your place turned into hell why not because you were necessarily profane not necessarily because you were a blasphemer or wicked in the extreme like some adolf hitler you just simply forgot god that's all well, you'll be turned into hell, says God. You'll be turned into hell. And all the nations, all of them, all the nations that, uh, that forget God will be turned into hell. You see, God's a just God. And he's an impartial judge. He judges impartially. He's not like the judges, you know, in your courts here in the West Midlands, you know according to how they feel on the day, you know, or according to the kind of lawyer that you can afford. You might get some measure of justice, but God, you see, my friends, he always and ever, he's the judge who always does right, impartially. He judges the righteous and the unrighteous. He judges the godly and the ungodly. Oh, but he's a good judge. He's a just judge. He's a fair judge. And he's always judging, even now in this world, even before the day of judgment. He sends judgments upon you. The virus is a judgment on your unbelief. The earthquake, the tsunami, the car accident, they're all judgments of God upon your unbelief, your forgetfulness of God. You forget God, you see, and you get judgments all the time. But then in that day when you breathe your last and go out of this world, you'll be turned into hell if you continue to forget God and live like a godless person, an ungodly soul, forgetting God, forgetting eternity, no thought of these things all your days. And then, my friends, only to be turned into hell. But God, God's justice, you see, it's a protection. It's a protection, you see. It's a punishment for the wicked. It's a punishment for the ungodly. It's a punishment for the unrighteous. But my friends, it's protection. It's the way that God protects the righteous. Because you see, if God did not judge, well, the righteous would be done down. The righteous wouldn't have a chance in this world. But God sends his judgments, you see, to protect the righteous. He cares for the righteous. He loves the righteous. Those who are righteous, that is by faith in his son, Jesus Christ. That's the only way a person can be righteous. <coughs> not of yourself, not of myself. Oh, my friends, the only righteousness that will stand muster in the sight of God, my friends, is his own righteousness. His righteousness produced by him and provided for us in the gospel. That when a man, you see a woman, believes on Jesus, God declares them to be righteous. That's God's method of righteousing people, making them, accounting them to be righteous. He sent his son to die to accomplish what the law could not do, what your being good could not do, if that were possible, by your being religious or anything else, but merely and simply and only by his free grace, his gracious, gracious salvation, and sending his son to accomplish that which we could not. So that when the person believes, the person truly believes in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The wrath of God, the justice of God is removed from all of them. And my friends, the righteous God cares for, he not only saves them, 
He not only reconciles them, he not only forgives them, but my friends, he keeps them, he guards them, he protects them all their days until they breathe their last and go to heaven. God cares. And you see, one of the ways in which God cares for his righteous people is by judging the wicked. His justice protects the righteous and it punishes, it punishes the wicked. But my friends, how many times, how often, how severely must God's punishments come to you before you think on God, remember God. And my friends, think upon eternity and think upon that day when you'll breathe your last and be turned into hell. Because this, says King David, is what will be the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So now is the time, my friends. Pay heed to these judgments. Pay heed, my friends, to the punishments that come upon you now. Maybe another dose of COVID-19 is coming your way. Maybe you're next. I don't know. There are many. There's a million ways by which God can remove you from this planet. But maybe even your personal circumstances today, whatever they might be, poverty or prosperity, it matters not. But all the afflictions that come to you in life, all of them, my friends, all the difficulties and disappointments, their wake-up calls, their remember your Creator while you may and obey Him. Obey His gospel call to repent and believe the gospel that you might not be turned into hell but turned into heaven. But my friends, how severe, how terrible does it have to get? Back in the 1500s, there was in Europe, there was a black plague, there was a pestilence came upon Europe and half the population almost, 45% my friends of Europe perished in the black plague in the 1500s. Will it take something like that to waken you up? Will it take that, something like that to make you sober minded? Will it take something like that to make you think upon eternity and think upon the day when you'll be turned into hell if you're not reconciled to God, if you're not repentant, if you're not living repentantly, if you're not living believingly? That's the end of you. That's the end. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the end of all the punishments turned into hell all the nations that forget God. A day of retribution is coming. And of course, some people dismiss it. Why? Well, because they can't see it coming. Because it's not in front of them. Because it's not now. And so they put off any thought of eternity. They put off any thought just because things are okay just now. You're breathing, you're healthy, you're strong. And maybe you've got some money in the bank. You think everything's okay. I see no danger. I see no harm. But the truth of the matter is you're hanging over a precipice and underneath you is the damnation of hell. And unless you repent, my friends, the card that holds you over that precipice, the card's going to be cut and you're going to fall into hell, turned into hell, all the nations that forget God. All the peoples, my friends. So you see, my friends, the danger is real. The danger is imminent. You're closer to it than you think or realize. But don't be putting it off, my friends. Don't be dismissing it just because it's not in front of you. You're not punished now, so you think, well, it's okay, I've got time. You've no guarantee of any more time. Now is the day, says God. Now is the acceptable time. Only this time, my friends. Not even an hour's time. Not even another day, another week, another year. 
You're not guaranteed, my friends, even one more hour. Now is the time, says God. The acceptable time with God might not be acceptable with you, but it is with God. God's acceptable time. Now is the time to receive the Son of God. Believe on His name that you might be saved from such an end as being turned into hell. That's the end of the ungodly, the unrighteous, the wicked, those that forget God, my friends. A day of retribution, it's coming. It's coming sooner than you think. Sooner than you think, my friends. More. And there are more. I guess that this, I guess this would describe the most the majority of people in Walsall today. Majority of people are forgetters of God. Some of you are religious, profane, ungodly religion, false religion, damnable religion, Islam, Roman Catholicism, the Watchtower Society, the whole shebang, the whole nine yards, ungodly, wicked religion. But you might say, you might say, well, at least they've got some notion of God. Might be a false one, but they've got a notion of God. But the majority of you here today, you're forgetters of God. Never, never the notion in your head any thought of Him, all of eternity, or what He will do with you, or what He requires of you. One man in the Bible, in alarm, in distress, he cries out, he asks the question, what must I do to be saved? That question's not even in your mind. That's how, how stupid ungodliness makes you. That question's not even in your mind. Would you know if the alarm and distress came upon you? If God was to smite your conscience, awaken it, would you know what you have to do in order to be saved? There's only one thing. Only one thing, whosoever believeth on the Son, that is. Whosoever believeth on the Son of God, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Faith towards the Son of God, sent into the world, my friends, to be a Savior, appointed and anointed of God. He came to live a blameless life, which he did, and die on a cross. Suffer, my friends, at the hands of wicked, cruel men and rise again from the dead in order that you might be saved through faith in his name. There is no other way and no other name by which you can be saved. Mohammed did not die for sinners. The Watchtower Society can't reconcile you to God. The Pope of Rome, my friends, he did not die for sinners. Only one person who died for sinners, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only mediator between God and man. The only one who can fetch you back to God. The only one who can turn you into heaven instead of you being turned into hell. But the wicked, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Oh, my friends, what must you do to be saved? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You must repent of your sin, of your wickedness, of your ungodliness and righteousness. You must turn before you burn, before you are cast into the nethermost, nethermost pits of hell. Those who forget God, my friends, that's the end of them. Never give God a thought. Never give His Son a thought. Never give eternity a thought. The nethermost regions of hell, the deepest pit of hell, belongs to such as you. So I bid you think on them, and think on eternity, and where you will spend it. God's nature, my friends, God's nature requires punishment. God is not like you and I. He does not think as you and I do. 
God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts and mine. Now, my friends, God, oh, God is love. And many, many people, so-called Christians, will come and tell you that he loves everybody. But that's not true. That's a lie. Not true at all, my friend. You see, God is love, most certainly. And his love is to be seen only in one place. No, nowhere else in all the world, in all the universe, where you can behold the love of God, but in the cross of his son, Jesus Christ. That's the only place where you can see the love of God, receive the love of God, and be blessed with the love of God. If you've not been to the cross of Jesus, if you've not received the Son of God, who died for sinners, my friends, you have no part in the love of God. Now, my friends, God is not just love. He is all all that he reveals himself to be, his most excellent name, all by which he reveals himself. He is a just God. He punishes the wicked. He turns the forgetters of God into hell in that day. And my friends, he is just and he is holy. His character, he's a holy God. Now, my friends, you can go to some religions like Islam, and they'll tell you that they're, they're figment, they're God, you know. They're, they're, they're God. He will accept, he will accept murderers. He will accept murderers into his paradise. My friends, not God, not the living and true God, not the God of the Bible. He will not allow uncleanness. He will not allow blasphemy. He will not allow blasphemous religion. He will not allow that which is unholy into his heaven or into his presence. He is a holy God and he demands holiness of you and I. Righteousness, godliness, my friends. But the ungodly, the wicked, the profane, the religious, the religious, he will turn into hell in that day, my friends. Your religion won't save you. Only Jesus can do that. Only the mighty Son of God, what he was sent for, the business, the errand that he was sent on to rescue his people, to die for them and reconcile them to God that they might be turned into heaven. But all the nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. God's nature requires, he must punish sin. He must, my friends. Your very conscience tells you that. Day after day, your conscience smites you, strikes you, convicts you, my friends. You know it's wrong but you continue to do it and harden yourselves and damage your soul. But my friends, if you're not rescued, if you're not rescued by Jesus, if Jesus does not rescue you, if he does not save you, you'll be turned into hell. God's nature requires it. He will not have ungodliness. He will not have forgetters of God. He will not have fornicators. He will not have sodomites. He will not have thieves and blasphemers. He will not have murderers in his presence. He is of holy. He is of pure eyes and to behold iniquity. Look at it. Never mind. Receive it into his presence. He must punish it, my friends. Evil doers. The wicked he punishes. They shall not stand in the judgment. They shall perish. The way of the ungodly shall perish. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. His holiness, his holiness abhors sin, my friend. He hates it. Do not do this thing that I hate, says God. Sin that is, my friends. 
the sin that comes out of your sinful nature, the sin that you do day after day, the sin that you do in forgetting God, leaving him out of your life, your thoughts, no thought of him, of eternity, turned into hell because he abhors and he hates wickedness. And those who do wickedness, he cannot and he will not spare the guilty. Somebody must take your guilt. Somebody must lift it from off you. Not somebody, my friends, the only somebody who can do that for you is Jesus Christ, who died to shed his blood, the one who loved sinners and gave himself for them, who came to die for this reason in order that your sin and the guilt of it might be removed. Oh, some of you, some of you have ways of dealing with a guilty conscience. You turn to drugs, drugs le legal and illegal. Some of you turn to the alcohol, to the brewers. You turn to all kinds of tricks, all kinds of things to take away the guilt from off your consciences. But the day's coming. Maybe you harden yourself sear your conscience as with a hot iron but the day is coming says God when the book of your conscience will be opened and everything will be laid bare in that day when he judges you impartially he'll open the book of your conscience and it all be laid bare before the whole universe every thought every word every deed that ever ever you did, my friend, and the guilt, the enormity of the guilt, my friends, will be heaped upon you and crush you and drive you down into hell. So heavy, so freighted, so weighted will the guilt of your conscience be that God will not have to turn you into hell. Your guilt will do that for him unless it's lifted, unless it's taken away, unless somebody takes your place. But that's what Jesus came for. He's a divine substitute. He, he's the one who was crucified. He's the one dead buried. He's the one who died the just for the unjust. He's the one, my friends, who, who was just and who died for those who are unjust in order that you might be justified, freely justified by his blood, in order that you might be reconciled to God, in order that your sin, your guilt, all his guilt might be taken away and of peace with God and the peace of God that passeth all understanding for those who will turn and trust in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only Savior, my friends. Only, only by faith, only by faith, my friends. This is our Protestant war cry. Grace alone, the saving grace of God alone. Faith alone, believing, whosoever believeth on the Son shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Grace alone, faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, because there is no other Savior, no other Redeemer. There is no other way back to God. I am the way, says Jesus. No man comes to the Father. No one gets right with God but by me. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. No one else. No one else who can save you from hell. From being turned into hell because you've forgotten God. Oh, oh my friends, Jesus. You need Jesus more than you need to breathe. You need Jesus more than you need these stupid face masks. Huh? You need Jesus more than you need those damn face masks. Huh? 
Get them off your face and call upon the name of the Lord that you might be saved. Salvation's what you need. And Jesus is the Savior, the only Savior. It's him that you need. Him you need to go to. Only he. No, sir. No. No, that's a definite no. Don't do that. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And only Jesus can save you from that and turn you into heaven. God will judge you impartially in that day. You won't say it wasn't my fault. You won't say that I didn't mean it. You won't say it was somebody else. No blame shifting. God will show you, yes, you meant it. Yes, you did it. And nobody else. Your sinful, wicked heart and nature. That's where it came from. Conceived in sin, born in sin, lived in sin, deliberately, willfully, blindly, lived in sin all your days and forgot God. No notion of God. No thought of eternity. No fear of God. Fear the virus, but not God. No fear of God before your very eye. Oh, for that, my friend. That's all you got to do to get to hell. That's all you got to do, nothing else. Just simply forget God and you're turned into hell. That's all you got to do. Simply forget him and you're gone. Your history in that day, that's your end. The nethermost regions of the damnation of hell. Conscious. Conscious. That's not the end. That's not the end. You know, you think when your life's over, well, all your troubles will be over. You know? That's how your suicides think, you know? They think, well, if I top myself, all this pain, all this misery will go away. I'll be at the end of it. Death is not a state of non-being. Your soul will still be in existence in a million years' time. Yeah? When you die, you go to meet God. You go to meet the judge. You go to stand before the judge, my friends. And if you've forgotten God, you'll be turned into hell. That's the judgment, my friends. And you will be consciously, consciously existent for all eternity in the fires that are never quenched as Jesus for the worm dieth not my friends nobody but nobody like Jesus the Savior who loved sinners and gave himself for them nobody I tell you in all the pages of the Bible describe hell more graphically in real terms that Jesus does. Torment, conscious torment, night and day for all eternity. Conscious, eternal, everlasting existence in the torments of hell. That's the end of your ungodliness. That's the end of your unrighteousness. That's the end of your forgetting God. You won't forget him then. You won't forget him in hell. Huh? You won't forget him. He'll be there. He'll be there present with you in absolute, unmitigated wrath, my friends. That's hell. That's hell. Not devoid of the presence of God. He's everywhere. He's in hell. But he's in hell, my friends, in full unremitted wrath. That's the end of your forgetting God. That's the end of your ungodliness. That's the end of your sin. Reserved for the day of judgment. Is that you? You got a reserve ticket on you? You got a reserve ticket on you? Reserved for the fires of hell? Reserved for judgment? Reserved for the day of judgment? You got a reservation label on you today? 
My friends, you've either got a reservation label on you, reserved for the Day of Judgment, or a preservation label on you, preserved for heaven, preserved for glory, preserved for God and eternity with the saints. But my friends, if you have a reservation ticket on you today, reserved for judgment, the only one who can take it off you, take the ticket off you and give you a ticket for heaven, is Jesus Christ. But if you live forgetting God, you continue to live forgetting God, the wicked, the wicked, says David, shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Without his son, Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved from such an end. My friend, think about it. Think about it, it's all I ask you to do. Think about it. Oh, I would, my friends, I would. Uh, David, he finishes the psalm, he says, put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Put them in fear, Lord, he said. Put them in fear. I would rather God terrified you today than you were lost and you were turned into hell. Better you are terrified now than be lost in that day when you breathe your last. And go out of this world straight into hell straight into hell and then on the day of judgment you'll be fetched out of hell to be judged and then you'll be sent back into hell the nethermost parts of hell the blackness and darkness the pit my friends of destruction the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God the sweet psalmist of Israel, he tells us like it is, no political correctness, you know, none of that smooth, silver tongue, smarmy, guile and deceit, you know, mincing his words. He tells you straight, tells you like it is, you remain ungodly, you remain unholy, you remain unrighteous, you remain forgetting God in this world. You'll be turned into hell, he says. All the nations that forget God turn into hell. So I would have you today to be turned out of your sin, turned out of your sin nature, born again to eternal life. You must be born again, says Jesus. You must be gone out of those sinful natures. You must be given a new nature. A new heart, a new life, a new start, new beginning. Pardon, repentant, believing. You must be born again, accept the man. Be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again, says Jesus. Don't be astonished. Look at the human race. Look at yourself. Look at your ungodly state and condition. Who, I ask you, could change that but God himself? But God himself came in Jesus Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. The world of his own people. Chosen from before the foundation of the world. Chosen to salvation. To hear the gospel. Believe the gospel. Repent of their sin. Turn from their wicked ways and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in order that they might be saved and in that they turned into heaven and not turned into hell. Only answer, only way of escape. There's only one. I am the way. I am the resurrection and the life, says Jesus. Only one who can put the life of God into you, the love of God into you. The only one, my friends, who can resurrect you, regenerate you. That's what you need, not religion. Regeneration. 
you must be born again, or the day will come, I tell you, when you wish you'd never be born at all. Oh, my friends, you're a creature made by God, accountable to God, responsible to God, and you give account in that day. And you forget God, you continue to live in your ungodly, unrighteous, unholy. You continue to live out of that sinful nature, believing the lie, living out of the lie of false religion, secularism, Darwinianism. My friends, the end of it is, you shall be turned into hell, says David. All the nations, all the peoples, that forget God. You forget him at your peril. You leave him out of the equation, out of your hearts, out of your lives, to your peril. You're in danger, my friends. You're living in the city of destruction. That's what this world is. And it's so wicked, it's so ungodly, it's so profane, it's so forgetting of God now. I tell you in these last days, I wonder that you cannot smell the sulfur. I wonder that you cannot feel the flames licking at your feet. Such an ungodly, wicked, evil generation as this is. Turn! Turn, my friends, turn while you may. Repent, that is. Repent and believe the gospel, that is. Let the wicked forsake his way. Abandon it. And the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. For he will show mercy abundantly pardoned. God, no commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Except you repent, says Jesus, ye shall all likewise perish that is be turned into hell. Oh, yeah. All the nation, the wicked, shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. Oh, my friends, let not your end be as this. Let this not be the conclusion to the years that God gives you in this his world. But give God the glory. Give God the glory. Own up to your sin. Repent of your sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that your sin might be removed that you might be forgiven and that you might be turned one day into heaven, but not without Jesus, not without the Son of God, not without God the Son. No way, my friend, no way. Jesus, only Jesus, no other Savior. But the Word of God, the Bible, King David's Psalm, and all the rest of the Bible. Jesus says, they, these are they which testify of me. Search the scriptures. Search the word of God, the Bible. Until you find Jesus. And when you find him, repent of your sin. And cry out to him, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Cry and cry and give him no rest until you do find him, until you know that he's yours, until you know that you're forgiven, until you know that you have a preservation label upon you. Ah, oh, Jesus, my friend, he assures you that he will in no wise cast out any sinner any sinner who comes to him in the God ordained way repentance and faith why he commands you today repent ye and believe the gospel 
life or the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the way you enter God's kingdom. In the way of repentance and faith. And that's the way you live until you die. In repentance and faith. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel also. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is in hand. That you might not be turned into hell along with all the other forgetters of God. But remember him. While you may, you can, and turn to him in repentance and call upon his name. His name is Jesus. Call upon his name that you might be saved, that you might be forgiven, and that you might be at the end of your course in this world, that you might be turned into heaven instead. You like a copy of God's Word? Read for yourself, study, meditate upon God's Word. See that these things are so according to God's Word. Just exactly as He says, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Read, study, meditate upon it, until you've got the conviction in you of the truth, of the reality, of your danger, of your peril, and that you might turn and call, call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. You like a copy of God's Word freely offered to you, no cost, no obligation to you, you're simply and only for the taking. You would like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you, bless you also, and of mercy, mercy I say upon your precious, never dying souls.